have a question. If I asked you what a pipig is, would you say it was A, the name of something they sell at Ikea, or B, a grass-type Pokemon that's part piglet, part apple seed? Well, what if I told you that here the answer is both? Welcome to the Ikea region! Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley, it's the Harry Gold Show, with your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. I'm Professor Plywood, a Pokemon professor, and today I'm in the far-flung land of Ikea, somewhere northeast of Paldea. This is where the store of the same name comes from, famous for their mystifying instruction leaflets, subtle hints of Nordic sterility, and real goofy product names. One flirty goobin, please. What you might not know, though, is that those silly sounding furniture kits are all actually named after Pokemon, specifically Ikean Pokemon, native to the store's homeland. Like the one we just saw, for instance. In store, Pipig is just a kind of placemat, now ethically made with recycled plastic instead of by skinning NFL referees like they used to. But out here in the IKEA region, Pipig is a very popular grass type. Pipig, the apple seed Pokemon. It likes to dig into the ground, so only its leaves are showing, and absorb moisture from the soil. These hard-headed little fellas have a pip for a noggin, which they use for headbutting opponents. They also make for lousy bacon. It's kind of gritty, burns really easily, and I think it has cyanide in it? Or, um, <clears throat> so I've heard. I, I'd never condone something so unethical as eating a Pokemon, of course. Uh, anyhow, uh, Ikea didn't stop there either. Pippig's entire evolutionary line has products named after it. For one, they make packs of plastic coat hangers so affordable you won't even notice how flimsy and ugly they are. These are called Sprutig, which is of course Pippig's evolved form. Sprutig, the unripe Pokémon. It has a very powerful snout. If its body begins to soften and change color, it's ready to evolve. Sprutig has sprouted even more than Pippig. It even walks on its hind legs now. I guess some Pokemon are more equal than others after all. Good thing it's not a grass starter either, otherwise poker fans would be getting out their pitchforks right about now. From there, much like Burmy or the Nidoran family, Sprutig can evolve into one of two different Pokemon, depending on its gender. The male's namesake is a range of outdoor furniture, including tables, chairs, and storage benches, which would look at home in a garden or an amputee's house. Ikea dubbed these Aplero. Aplero, the apple core Pokemon. When angered, it rolls with enough speed and strength to flatten a truck. Aplero are about as friendly as they look, and with upper body strength like theirs, it's not just doctors who are better off keeping away. It's a good thing they don't grow on trees too, otherwise Isaac Newton would have had to discover reconstructive surgery before he ever got around to gravity. Meanwhile, this strangely razor blade shaped chopping board is called Hogsma, so named for the final form of all female Sprutics. Hogsma, the orchard Pokemon. It does not mind if its fruit is picked, though it will jealously defend the one in its mouth. The exact reason for that is one of those Pokemon mysteries we just don't have an answer to. Like how something like Remoraid could evolve into Octillery, or why anyone thought Brute Bonnet and Sandy Shocks weren't the dumbest sounding names ever. Drablings are clocks designed for all the obnoxiously vocal dark mode fanboys which litter the internet. This too is named for a native Ikean species. Drabling, the ugly duckling Pokemon. It is envious of Pokemon like Quaxley and Duckling for their plumage. If it encounters one, it will mope for days. They're delightfully sulky little fellows. When it rains, they like to find a puddle to sit in and look miserable. Unfortunately, this means that no matter what you do with them, whether it's peaking style or prepared a l'orange, it always just comes out soggy. Or, uh, that, that's what I've been told anyway. I, I personally never eat a Pokemon, of course. Uh, despite all that, naturally, as soon as Drabbling evolves into something more beautiful, they'll gloat till the mill tanks come home. At the IKEA store, Valentuna is a range of modular sofa pieces that you can arrange and assemble into any formation you please. It's like more practical Lego for boring suburbanites. Love Disc, as you may well know, is a heart-shaped water-type Pokemon native to the abundant oceans of the Hoenn region, even if it does look more like some manner of Beanie Baby. But similar to the many Pokemon from Kanto, later found to have evolved forms living elsewhere, Love Disc does indeed have its own evolution, which lives exclusively off the Ikean coast. Valentuna. The Romance Pokémon. In local folklore, it is said that a couple who spots one together is destined for everlasting love. They're charming, elegant creatures that drift serenely through the ocean, looking for another Valentuna to kiss. I guess there's just not much point in using Tinder when they'd all have the same identical profile. 
IKEA, the multinational conglomerate, also sells a wide variety of mirrors, both standing and hanging. Only one of them folds like a month old Twitch alternative, however, and that is named for the popular IKEAN Pokemon, Cinnabee. Cinnabee, the hive mind Pokemon. It uses telekinesis to keep its small swarm airborne and synchronized. This bug psychic type has perfect synergy between its individual drones. They all share a single consciousness and are incapable of thinking individually. <laughs> You know, just like... Insert political faction or pop culture fandom you dislike here. <laughs> now that's satire. Grimer is a stand for placing your iPad on, so you can prepare a meal in the kitchen while you continue to binge through the entire back catalogue of your favourite YouTube channel. Including the not very good early videos that don't quite fit and are kind of cringeworthy, but they were trying their best, okay? Of course, it's <laughs> named for a Pokemon you're almost certainly already familiar with. Everyone knows Grimer, the poison type sludge puddle native to Kanto, though in the local Ikean dialect, they spell it with an A rather than an E. The Ikean regional form of Grimer, which you are much more likely to see around here, is actually a fairy type. Grimer, the wad Pokemon. It blows bubbles of sticky sweet goo and uses them to stop opponents from moving by fastening them to the ground. As with many of the world's regional Pokemon forms, Ikean Grimer has an evolution peculiar to its region, and the store chain named a line of fabric-based storage units after it. Whereas Grimer from Kanto evolves into Muck, Grimer from Ikea evolves into Stuck. Stuck, the trodden Pokemon. Once it decides to cling to a surface, almost nothing can induce it to come off. Stuck looks like it's upside down when it's right side up, as it prefers to stick to the undersides of surfaces in out of the way places. Despite their bright coloration and candy-like consistency, they don't really taste of anything and aren't digestible. At least they, they wouldn't be in the event you tried to consume one, which of course I would never do. Eating Pokemon's wrong, Every, everyone knows that. Tuffing is a line of bunk beds and loft beds you can get at Ikea. Loft beds, for anyone who is unfamiliar, being like a four poster that someone tried to assemble with without instructions. But that's not all Tuffing is. Tuffing, the play-fighting Pokemon. Even though it tries to seem threatening, it is beloved by children everywhere as a soft, huggable companion. They're a normal fighting type that look like they're spilling fluff everywhere. Tuffing's fists are squishy but fast. Imagine being hit in a pillow fight, except the other guy is actually a Learjet with a pillow strapped to its wing. <laughs> IKEA also sells portable high chairs, a quintessential part of any ruined dining experience, which they have named Antelope. Antelope, the blade Pokemon. It fights for a territory among its own kind using its extremely sharp horns. Even if you were in a race car, you couldn't outrun one. They use their antlers to lop down trees so that they can reach fruit and leaves that would otherwise be up too high. Even if they are vegetarians, you won't find me anywhere near those things. I'd rather not find out firsthand just how good their Patrick Bateman impression is. Like Shellos and Oricorio, Antelope actually comes in more than one variety. In the lush wooded parts of the Ikea region, you'll find Antelope's forest form. That's form spelled without an inexplicable E, by the way. Whereas in the arid Ikean desert, yes, Ikea does have one. This is a Pokemon region after all, gotta put those ground types someplace. There, Antelopes come in a different variety. Antelope, the blade Pokemon. Its body is covered in near impenetrable plating. So if two of them butt heads, neither will be seriously harmed. The Desert Antelope is a ground steel type, and it uses those razor-sharp horns to slice up cacti and get its water from there. In other words, if you try to carve up this cut of venison, it's gonna return the favor. Too bad. I already mentioned Drablings earlier, but Ikea doesn't just do analog clocks. When they're not busy engaging in witchy pagan rituals, Ikeans are fully invested in the cutting edge of modernity. As such, the Ikea store sells digital timepieces as well, like this little number, the Plug It. Plug It, the electric slug Pokemon. Its rubbery skin does not conduct the electricity which courses through it, but touching its tail could give you a nasty shock. They're a lot more powerful than their size would suggest. The average plug it has enough voltage in its squishy little bod to fry its way through the whole of death row all in one sitting. No pun intended. The IKEA store sells an armchair and footstool set, which, as expected of the blandness the store excels at, come typically in an aggressively neutral grey. Named for yet another Pokemon found only in that region, this range of products is called... Strandmon? 
Digimon, is he here? Digimon? Did you, hey, that thing can't be here. Which one of you chuckleheads let it in? Shy by nature and easily frightened. Straight monstrous high behind its flowing hair, which it can also harden into a makeshift shield. Son of a, do you know how many laws this is breaking? Somebody tell my secretary to call the cops. No, wait, tell her to call my lawyers. It's special move is here with, by which it controls a lot of hair like a tentacle, and it strikes swiftly at its opponent. Jesus H. Christ on a cracker. This is why I hate working with amateurs. <laughs> uh, where was I? Uh, Galant. Galant is a range of filing cabinets and drawer units, but they're not just somewhere to store your collection of 47 identical ditto transformed into Magnemite plushies. They're also an Ikean bug steel type. Galant, the soldier ant Pokemon. Its armored exoskeleton helps it to defend its nest from hungry heat more. They drive their pointed limbs into the surfaces they climb in order to anchor their heavy metallic bodies. If you've got a better reason to wear insect repellent, I'd like to hear it. One of IKEA's most popular products online doubles as their unofficial mascot. It's just a straight up plush of the IKEAN Pokemon. Uh, blah, uh, um. Okay, so see this Pokemon? It's supposed to be pronounced Illumise, if you can believe it. I bring this up because phonetics are clearly not the top priority for whoever it is that gets to name these things. So while Blahaj might be the way it's spelled, this little fella is actually pronounced something more like Blowhigh. Blowhigh, the sad shark Pokemon. Though it looks permanently dejected, its disposition is typically quite cheerful. With a name like Blowhigh, you might imagine it was something with a blowhole, like a whale or a palafin, but nope, it's definitely a fish. It's a pretty plain looking Pokemon too, but with competition like Seal and Flamigo out there, I suppose you could do worse. And I think that gives you a pretty good idea of the sort of Pokemon that live in the Ikea region. So let me know in the comments. Did you have a favorite? Are you a fan of the Ikea store? Have you tried the Ponyta meatballs? Yeah, uh, me neither. Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, then three people who guess who it is in the comments will get a shout out in the next episode. If you were one of the thousand plus people that guessed YouTuber Scott the Was last time, you were absolutely correct. And today's rule from the Wheel of Winners is... The first three correct guesses to comment nothing but the name. Not even punctuation marks. There are no F's in Roberto F's chat because he just came in first. 5AAR turned that 5 upside down, landing second. And I don't know if it's the sinus man or the sea nose man, but either way, he's sniffed out third place. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. The big droopy eyes on today's subject are so far apart from one another, they each need a VPN to see the same shows on Netflix. Their forehead is quite expensive, which might explain why they've been known to lease it out as a billboard. And because it's hogging all the real estate, the rest of their facial features are bunched up together. Like someone started drawing from the top and realized they were running out of paper by the time they got to the nose. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. And subscribe may not sound like the name of a Pokemon, but it does sound like the name of a button you should click on if you enjoyed this video. But this has been the Harry Gold Show. So until next time, stay safe, and God bless.